want to be able to. Okay. So I'm going to bring. Yeah, here we are. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. I'm just okay. trying to make sure you can see me. Can you see me? I can see you and I have Facebook on my phone right here. So I can see that Facebook can see you and I as well. Great. <laughs> Hi, Facebook. How's everybody doing tonight? If you are hopping on, I am excited to bring you Dr. Bronte DeShield tonight. She is an amazing educator. She's an amazing educator and she has so many different experiences. And so Dr. Bronte, thank you yes. so much for coming on. Thank you for having me, honored to be here. You're welcome. Uh, tell us a little bit about you. Hey, I am Dr. Bronte Dashiell. I am a educational consultant for ECF Consulting Services, and we help teachers. We support teachers in the classroom. We help administrators in the classroom for our students with exceptionalities, helping them and reminding them to inspire um, to in, make sure that they are creating an impact when those students leave them for the following year with some skills, mm -hmm. um, with some coping mechanisms. And I've been in the field for education for about 30 plus years. Um, did not originally want to be a teacher, but God had the final say, and here I am <laughs> 30 years and later. Works. <laughs> yes, I've had some amazing experiences, not just in our nation, but also internationally um, on the island of Saipan in Northern Mariana Islands, which is Micronesia, and in United Arab Emirates, in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi. So um, that's a little bit about me. I'm very passionate about education and making sure that our students have equitable experiences and that they're out, allowed to have the power to achieve and just be great. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. You know, we should have you back on again in another time and you can share some of your experiences overseas because I know you and I have chatted and it yeah. is mind-blowing <laughs> of experience. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I so tonight we're going to focus on uh, behavior management success strategies. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Bronte, you have had some experience in higher education. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And so I thought it would be fantastic to start the month of behavior management success off talking about um, strategies that you would share as a professor with new teachers. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. A lot of our, our audience is new teachers, new special ed teachers. Yes. So yes. tell us, what would you say to them and what are some things that you would really want them to know okay. coming in. The first, it. yeah, the first thing would be knowing thyself. Mm -hmm. um, you have to know what are your triggers as a human being, because we're teaching students how to monitor the behavior, how to have self-control. But if you're not displaying that as their model, right? Um, they're around you sometimes more than their parents. So they're looking at everything that you do and say what you wear, how's your hair, if you're grouchy, if you're happy, if you're sad, they notice all of it. So knowing thyself is very important when you go into a group of kids. And when you, especially when you go into a kids and a group of kids who are accepted, who have exceptionalities and are special needs, mm -hmm. highly, highly emotionally intuitive. They know everything about you sometimes before you know it about yourself. So they will sometimes say things because they're very honest. Mm -hmm. And it may take you aback for a second. And that's where that know thyself comes in, being confident about who you are, who, where your presence is. Um, we all have those advantages of who we are as beings. For example, I stand about 6'2 in my heels. So that gives me advantage if I'm working with a population of students who are shorter than me, right? I kind of have a different presence. But I had friends who are currently now, um, Dr. Lowe, who's now at UNC Charlotte as a professor, she's about four foot eight. And she was terrified. 
She was like, Bronte, oh my God, they're so, they're bigger than me. What am I going to do? I said, you have to go in like you're 6'10". Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to have the presence like you're 6'10". Because you, if you go in doubting yourself, they will use that and pick you apart. And as they told, I've heard them say, I'm going to make you quit before the end of the school year. And actually, I've seen them do that. So you want to be know, aware of self, know thyself, aware of your attributes, right? Um, mm-hmm. For example, as an African-American, I may have a different connection with an African-American student. Why? Because I look like their grandmother, I look like their mother, I look like their auntie. And so they may respond to me a little differently. I had mm-hmm. teachers say, why is it when you ask them to pull their pants up, they don't give you any back talk? But when I asked them, they cursed me out. I said, well, Part, let's say number one, I sound like their auntie and their grandmama. Mm-hmm. So in their head, they're like, okay, yes, ma'am. But it may counteract, but you have to find what your strength is with that student. You're not me and I'm not you. So I think knowing thyself and then being sure that you have a presence, that you're confident that this is where I'm supposed to be at this time for this group of students for this academic year. Those are the first very important things that I would say to them. My other thing would be use that first two weeks to develop relationships with your students. Mm -hmm. For me, again, having students with emotional and behavior disorders, I can't de-escalate them if they feel there's no connection to me. They are not going to respond to me when I tell them to put the chair down Mm -hmm. or to take the pencil out of their hand that they're about to stab another student with or even try to do that to me. Mm -hmm. build that relationship, take the time to get to know them, know the boundaries of what you share with them as a professional, but don't be so aloof that they feel that they can't touch you because Mm -hmm. that's not going to give you any kind of momentum when you do get in a crisis and you need to de-escalate them because the behaviors are up here. How do you bring that down? That relationship, it will win every single time. So number three would be build that relationship that first two weeks, Don't worry about five plus five. Don't worry about ABC. Get to know who they are. Get to know where they're coming from. Get to know their neighborhoods. Sometimes even go, I've even gone to their neighborhoods and they're shot like, oh my God, I can't believe you're here. Why? I'm here to see you. You weren't in school today. Oh yeah. I need to talk to your mom. And so then they start to say, well, gosh, she actually cares about me more than just being in her school at a desk. She cares that I'm enough to come to my neighborhood. Oh my. So take those are the first three things that I would say Mm -hmm. um, to give to my teachers when they're about to go out. And we have usually for student teachers, we have that orientation session where we give them information like this or our role play with them to Mm kind of let them know what they might be expecting. And some of them are like, oh my God, I can't believe this. Um, I remember it was a a situation (laughs) And one of the students was acting with this role playing and she was like, it's my birthday, it's my birthday. And the lady was like, well, happy birthday. I said, well, it's not necessarily always a birthday. That's just the kind of a celebration that the kids might do. And she was like, oh, okay. Again, learning their culture, building that relationship. So those are some of the things for sure. I think one thing you've, you've said so much, I feel like if we, if we really broke down everything that you said there, we could have a whole college course (laughs) in and of itself. Um, Selena stones on here. Hey, everybody. And Selena says relationship building is everything, everything, everything. And I think one of the things that as new teachers coming in, they want that but they don't necessarily know how to get there. Yes. Right. And so you talked about a couple different things. You talked about learning their culture, learning their, you know, and you might have the same culture as the students, you know, cultures within cultures. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And our world is changing so fast now. You know, my son is 23 and he's like, I can't believe how different the 17 year olds are for me, you know, like, and they're so close together, but everything is changing so fast. So, and they're saying in 2030 that we're going to have the most diverse classrooms ever. Mm. And the, and the majority will be kids of biracial ethnicity. So again, my question is, how are we preparing for that? 
because that relationship isn't going to happen if we're not ready for it. And there are, you mentioned, there's cultures with, as an African-American, when I taught in DC, they were like, you're a Bama. That's not a good thing. I was like, what do you mean I'm a Bama? Why are you calling me a Bama? You don't talk like us. You talk like white people. Why are you talking like this and this and this and this and this? And I'm like, wow. They had music that I hadn't listened to. They had go-go music. I'm only two hours away, Jess. It's a different world. So there's cultures within cultures. I had to take time to get to know that inner city DC culture that's so different from the rural Eastern shore of Maryland where I live. So Mm -hmm. again, culture within cultures, taking time to see what that look, taste, smell like. It's very important. So share with us a little bit more about what strategies you used if a new teacher was standing before you saying, I'm in this situation that you just described, what would you say to him or her? I would ask them, number one, you again, knowing thyself, you have to be authentic. They're going to know if you're fake or phony. Mm. So you really have to do a self-check. And how can I be vulnerable? And even just saying, well, I have a brother and a sister. How many brothers and sisters do you have? Or what's their name? And what number are you? Oh my goodness, really? Or my favorite food is this. What is your favorite food? Or my favorite restaurant is this. It may be something they know or something they didn't know. And some of them like music. I used to do an exercise. I would tell the teachers, my student teachers, that I would tell students to come back to class with your favorite song that describes you. Mm. And making sure, number one, it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. And then I would also bring my favorite song that described me. Mine was India Irie's, uh, what is it, video, Mm -hmm. right? So, and of course, they're like, who is India Irie? We don't know who that is, right? And some of the things then was Master P. I'm like, who is Master P? I don't know who that is. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a rapper that was just coming out from that area. And so me taking the vulnerability and me asking those student teachers, those new teachers, you have to be a little vulnerable Mm -hmm. because you're asking them, you're asking them to be into in your in their world, in their brains, Mm -hmm. which they're very insecure about at times. So why should I share with you that part of me? when I don't really know who you are. And some of them will tell you, you don't, I don't know you, you don't know me. Mm-hmm. So being prepared for that, have an exercise that allow them to express who they are in a different form. It could be through dance, it could be through music, it could be through poetry. You could have a, set your room up as a poetry night, a written or spoken word session. You know, you could have, bring, bring the favorite food that you enjoy and everyone kind of has a little potluck in the classroom together, getting to know that culture is so important. Getting to know about what kind of sneakers do you like? Why do you like those sneakers? The kids are wearing sneakers that we were liking back in the eighties. They're all popular. Denim is back in. Hello. (laughs) And they think it's brand new. Like they think it's brand new. And I'm like, it's so not, it's so not. (laughs) You know, and they're like, what do you mean? You're old, what do you mean? I'm like, no, this is so not new. So mm-hmm. taking that time and then sitting down with them and not being so formal is it, it does the little things. It does wondrous things. I also suggest to teachers that activity is I have coffee time. You know, kids now like coffee. I mm-hmm. wasn't allowed to drink coffee when I was a kid. Mm-mm. We had to wait till we were adults. Yeah. So I had coffee time. I brought in Dunkin' Nuts coffee. We sat in a circle, whether it was talking about a book, talking about music, but it was just their time to chat with me about things that were on their mind as long as it was appropriate Mm -hmm. and we took and I took the time to answer that and they asked for it what are we going to do that again that was so cool so you got to you got to be creative and being able to get to their level if it's the little people it's okay to take your shoes off and sit in the Indian style and be on the floor with them you don't always have to be towering over them to show them that you're in control so being on the floor with them, again, is a way to be vulnerable with them. Sitting on the floor in an Indian style is being about taking your shoes off, is being vulnerable with them. So what I hear you saying really is find the common ground. Everybody yes. eats, right? Pretty much everybody has heard music. Right? Yes. You know, and not maybe not everybody loves to read, but everybody's right. been exposed to books yes. for the most part in our school. Right? Yes, yes. You know, you may like, you may not like, but yes. that's that can be part of the conversation, mm-hmm. right? Use your soft skills, mm-hmm. your relationship building, the way you mm-hmm. talk with other people. Mm-hmm. 
probably the way you talk to each other. Right. The kids are going to watch you talk to your coworkers. Yes, they do. They do. They do. do. And they're going to take hints and they're going to talk to you the way you talk to other people. And vulnerability is so important. I even, um, for myself, because even going to a new place to teach, I feel at times I'm a new teacher again because I'm getting to know the flow, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember taking time to go to a farmer's market. And I did that because a lot of the students' families had tables at the farmer's market. Mm-hmm. And, and other teachers were going to do other things like scuba diving and swimming. And I'm like, that's good. The ocean's going to be there, but this opportunity to build this relationship with this family of students might not be here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I need to monopolize on it as much as possible. So pretty much every Saturday, you found me at the farmer's market buying my fruits and vegetables from the families that I was teaching, those children that I was teaching, those students that I was teaching, those new teachers. So them watching me do that as their professor, right? If I'm, I'm not the person to say, do something that I haven't done before. So if mm-hmm. I'm telling them to build relationships with their students, I'm also showing them by taking the time on my Saturday to spend a few hours at their farmer's market, getting native fruits and vegetables, mm-hmm. being a little uncomfortable because it was hot, but mm-hmm. you can't put a dollar price on that experience and how it grew me as an educator and as one who also trains and teaches educators. Wow. That's powerful, Dr. Bronte. That's powerful. Thank I have uh, Brittany Tram. I'm sorry, Brittany, I'm trying your last name. <laughs> Trabatanius. <laughs> forgive me. Forgive me. Um, but she said she's always very vulnerable with her class telling them that she makes mistakes all the time and that she's not perfect, but she does still struggle with how to build those relationships. And the information that you're sharing tonight has been very helpful for her. Oh, great, great. Mm -hmm. And it's hard, they make it hard for us because the teacher, especially the first one to three years, you're trying to get nestled in and settled in Mm -hmm. and get used to the flow. There's a lot on you, but I always say, you must remember your purpose. My students come first. Yes, the principals have demands, but you have to teach your principal when you first start what those boundaries are for you. Meaning my classroom, being a place where students feel comfortable and vulnerable to be their best self is number one for me. That's why you hired me. Not about that I didn't put the grades in the grade book, even though I have another week to do it. Mm-hmm. That's not as important as these little people or adult people who are relying on me for guidance and support and encouragement. Again, our K through 12 students are with us more than they're with their parents most of the time. Mm-hmm. So they may have a relationship and tell you things that they don't even tell their parents because you built that comfortability and that safety net for them. That, that cocoon that you're building on day one is so important. I promise you, yeah. it has saved me in many a day. Even me, I, I was a residential um, principal for a lockdown level five school, one of the most challenging environments to be an administrator in. And I made sure I came in classrooms every single day to mm-hmm. greet my students. To the point that when I got ill, because they noticed that when the kids knew I was coming through the hallway, someone brought heels to work that didn't normally wear heels and said, Mr. Shill is coming and would walk in the hallway because they knew the kids were like, okay, she's coming. We got to be ready to learn. We got, you know, and I was like, that's wrong. That's so terrible. But, you know, hey. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. So it, 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 it was an honor because I said, thank God I have that much rapport and respect from those kids that I worked on. I, I earned that. I built that. Yeah. Taking that time as an administrator, you can get caught up in the principal's office trying to do principal things, just like you can get caught up doing administrative things as an educator. Those mm-hmm. students have to be your priority and you have to make that commitment, not just to yourself, but make sure in your interviews, And when you're meeting the new principals, 
you kind of have to put it out there. Look, I'm here for these students. They need me to be here. I show up every day for my students. I know the other things you need me to do, ma'am or sir, but these babies here are my responsibility for eight hours a day. Wow. And there's so many teachers and not even just new teachers, but veteran teachers, right? Yes. We get caught up, especially uh -huh. in a special ed classroom and it's IEP time and yes. we've got six, seven, 10, 12 IEPs to write. Yes. You know, each, if I don't know if anybody else, maybe other people have shortened their time frame, but I spend <laughs> 10 to 12 hours on each IEP. Yes. Right. Collecting the information from all the people and then collating it and yes. editing it and yes. the numbers and all the things. Right. And so it's like, OK, well, that's an extra hundred hours if I have 10 kids. <laughs> right. That's right. right? How, how do I teach mm -hmm. and do this and do the other things that my administrator is saying mm -hmm. they need from me? Right. Right. And so I think part of that is self-care, right? Mm -hmm. And as, as, a, as a professor for higher education, mm -hmm. what would you say to in, you know, graduating pre-service or mm -hmm. first year, second year, third year teachers about how to take care of themselves so that they can do all the things you're sharing? Um, again, knowledge of self. I noticed when I was teaching that I was getting grouchy around 11 in the morning because I wasn't a breakfast person, right? Mm -hmm. And I realized if I wasn't taking care of myself, I'm not going to have the proper energy that my students deserve when I come in the classroom. So my students are the reason why breakfast is my favorite meal. Hmm. I used you, to, so I started a out with, person. I was never a breakfast person. And so I would start out with smoothies and then maybe a bagel. And then now I'm like, I need an omelet. I need pancakes. I need the whole, the whole works. But breakfast is my favorite meal because of my students. So that's part of my self-care. But my students told me that. Like I, I cared enough about them, right? That I wasn't giving them the proper energy or the patience that they needed. That mm -hmm. I had to say, okay, you need to eat. So you can have the engine to go until 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. So me taking the time to listen to my spirit, listening to what my students were telling me, even though they didn't know they were telling me that, mm -hmm. and then making an adjustment mm -hmm. is part of my self-care. Mm -hmm. I also made a rule and I tell my students, my student teachers, don't take grading home. Thank you. Don't take grading home because once you start, you won't stop. Never. And since I have been in the field for over 30 years, when in higher ed, when exam time came, I got locked in the building. I told security, I'm going to be here grading exams. I'll probably be here till 1 a.m. Lock me in the building. And they would lock me in the building. And when I was ready to go, I would call the security and they would come let me out and walk me to my car because I was determined oh, I will not be not taking these exams home. home to grade because when I go home, my home is my serenity. Mm. I will work myself to death for you in that office. But when I'm home, I probably maybe three or four times in my whole career have taken grading home. It might've been because I was ill or I missed some time. And even then it's like, I set a timer and said, I have two hours to get these things done. And it might be something just putting the grades in the computer. It wasn't actually grading the papers. Mm -hmm. So definitely taking the time to, can you see me? Taking yep. the time to create that boundary that mm -hmm. I won't be that teacher taking books home and grading home with me. Even if it means I got to stay at work a little later, because when I leave, I want to leave and that's it. It's done. Yes. That's part of my self-care. And then me bringing snacks throughout today, healthy snacks to eat, because I don't always get a lunch break. But if I can nibble on some carrots and nibble on some grape, have some trail mix over here, then at least by the time is I can have a late lunch or early dinner. But I still need to refuel myself um, and know that I'm pouring out all day long. 
Right. So I try to teach my, my teachers to be, you have to make yourself a priority because when you do that, you have so much more to pour out to your students. Yes. I think of it as, um, you know, when you're, when you're on the airplane and they say, if the oxygen masks drop, yes. you put it on yourself <laughs> before you put it on your child. And yes. I was coming home on a, on a plane um, a couple weeks ago. And there were two families with little bitty babies with them. And the stewardess, the flight attendant, whatever they're called, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sure. But um, she stopped and she looked at the two moms and she said, you put those on yourself first. Like wow. they did the whole thing and then went yeah. to the moms. The moms won't, right? Wow. You, you yeah. think to put it on your baby first. Yeah. But then you're going to run out of air and you ain't no good to your baby anymore. That's right. Right. So and so true. that's what I hear you saying. You mm -hmm. have to take care of yourself. And, you know, mm -hmm. I have to say, I never thought of the food that we eat as being a type of self-care. Mm -hmm. right? I never thought of it as self-care. And it, it clearly yes. is. It clearly that is. That vending machine, even the vending machine where I work right now, it's empty at least by Wednesday. When you go by there, if I go there to use the bathroom by the vending machine, I'm like, oh my God, this was full Monday. By Wednesday, it's basically empty. Because wow. so many teachers have stopped to get a bag of chips, a pack right. of Oreos, a Snickers bar. I'm like, why don't they put healthy snacks in a daggone vending machine? Why we got that in there? You know, so I try to make sure that I have the healthy snacks as I'm going through the day, because as I said, I might not have a sit down 30 minute lunch. Right. Right. Usually I'm tutoring somebody or there's a kid that needs me to help them go through a, I had a kid, I had to help a kid make up a dance the other day. I'm like, Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I try to make sure I reinforce that self care. And even when I'm taking them through the orientation, when I, we do provide them lunch, I said, see, we took a break. We're nourishing ourselves, and then I can suck you for some more brain power. <laughs> <laughs> so you're modeling that and teaching them yes, to exactly. do the same thing. To do the same thing. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been. I I I really believe that this has been very helpful and very, um, I think, enlightening for any new teachers that are. You brought forth I hope a bunch so. of different ideas. And a bunch of different perspectives. So um, somebody's giving you the thumbs up there. I'm not sure. <laughs> who it is, but Thank you. Um, Thank you. One, one last thing I want to ask you is if you could challenge new special education teachers with one thing, what, what one thing would you leave them either I'm going to ask, is it because you really gave them advice all the way through? Right. So what one way would you challenge them? This is a big challenge. Okay. I think they're up to it. <laughs> it's getting a storm here. Oh, my God. Um, that I believe as an educator, you must always stretch yourself to be the best educator in the room which also means you must humble yourself to continue to learn and evolve as a person, as a being first. And therefore, when any student sits at a desk ready to learn, you find a way to teach them. Mm -hmm. I don't care if they speak 20 different languages and the English is their hundredth language, you find a way to teach them. I don't care if they don't smell good. I don't care if they're cursing you out and they've called you the N-word and every other word you can think of. Your responsibility is to find a way to teach them because if they're coming to school and they're sitting in that desk and they're watching you walk through that room, I guarantee you they're there to learn. They're there to get something from you. And sometimes it might just be starting out with attention to come by and say, how are you? I'm so glad you're here today. Because they might have their head down on the desk, but they're still sitting at desk. But if you just tap them, I'm so happy you're here today. How are you feeling? And they might just ignore you. That's okay. Keep doing it. One day they're going to look up at you with a little peek 
and say, I don't know why you keep picking on me. And you said, because I believe there's something inside of you that the world needs to see. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to do that. I'm here to bring out your best self. I'm here to bring out your greatness because the world is waiting for you. That's my challenge. Oh, that is a big one. But you nearly brought me to tears. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Dr. Bronte, you know, so many times, so many times we can get caught up in ourselves. Yes. We can get caught up in our own emotions. Yes. And so I love how you've tied everything together. Know yourself, know your triggers, give for your children fight for your students, take care of yourself yeah. and remember your purpose. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. that's some fire. Yeah. Teaching. And unfortunately in America, which that's another conversation we can have, but when you go to other countries and they bow to you, then, you know, in Asian countries, the lower the bow, the more the respect mm -hmm. when they bow to you because they know you're an educator. When they come to the airport, when there's the only flight that comes in at 1 a.m. and they bring their eucalyptus in their lays and their marble flowers, and my mom had flowers up to her nose because they said, she's the mother of our teacher. She's the mother of our professor. Mm. I hope for our country one day, America will have that same respect mm. of how important we are to our society being the best, for our nation being the strongest. If we don't, prioritize education and educators, we will crumble and it's happening. Yeah. Wow. Well, I so appreciate you coming on. And as we wrap up, I wanna make sure that anyone who was touched by what you said today knows how to find you. Yes. And so share with us about that. Yes, I am on Instagram as Dr. B Dash, as well as ECS Consult 22. Um, you can Google me. I, I say that all the time because there's other ways that you can find about who I am and the things I've done. I'm also can be emailed at ECS um, Consult dot Dashiel, D A S H I E L L, at gmail.com. And I think those are some of the platforms that I'm on right now that I can think of. And I'm on LinkedIn as well under Dr. Bronte DeShiel or um, ECS Consulting Services, LLC. All right, so you know what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, um, once we finish this video here, um, mm -hmm. Dr. Bronte, I'm gonna ask you to go in and put all your links in the, okay. in the comments so okay. that they can find you. Okay. All right, so, but I did hear you say you're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and you shared an email. So yes. yes. Awesome. Well, it was such an honor to have you today. I'm, I'm so grateful that you came on and uh, I hope that anyone who uh, is wanting to talk with you further, everybody feel free, reach out. Dr. Bronte has so much to offer. This was just a, a tiny little snippet of the greatness that she brings to our profession. So thank you so much, Jess, for having me. I'm looking forward to seeing great things from you and us doing great things together in the field of education, more specifically special education. Amen. We are going to be doing great things together. So keep an eye out, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I am going to end this live here. Okay. Let's see if I can figure this out because it's coming through Zoom. Dr. Bronte, I think I have to end the Zoom meeting here. Okay. All right. So thank, thank you so you much. See All you, right. sweetie. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.